have you ever thought that maybe the reason you're hard stuck is because of your aim? Believe us when we say, yeah, a good portion of the time when we see clients hard stuck, it's because of their game sense and positioning and not their aim. But a large majority of our clients' woes could simply be solved by improving upon the most basic fundamental mechanic, their aim. Have you ever watched a professional player and thought to yourself, wow, it looks like he's barely even using his mouse while aiming? Well, that's because a majority of the time, these pro players aren't actually correcting all that much due to the fact that they have a very strong pre-aim. Pre-aiming is easily one of the most fundamentally important mechanics to master. It is easy to learn, easy to improve upon, but it's really hard to master. All professional players and a majority of higher level Immortal 3 players have mastered this skill perfectly. Trust us when we say pre-aiming can be picked up and improved consistently at any level of gameplay and it'll drastically improve your level of aim. Let's first take a look at some examples of poor pre-aiming followed by examples of good pre-aiming. You can see here this player, we'll call him Frank, swings from ropes to peak market on split only to realize his crosshair is a few inches from where his opponent is standing. His opponent's standing in the standard area, which people will peek from market to ropes. Since our friend Frank swung and was off from the standard angle, in turn, he panicked slightly and had to adjust his crosshair to where the enemy was standing, therefore causing him to lose nearly a whole second and adjust, losing him the gunfight. Let's take a look into how Frank easily could have played this differently. Frank has gathered the info from his feeding rays that an enemy's posted mid with a rifle and that it would probably be wise to peek in order to rebalance the man advantage. From here, Frank does a genius maneuver that'll win him the gunfight. He aims at the common angle in market that's generally where enemy players will hold ropes from, swings in promptly in order to get the trade for his team. Frank won this fight due to proper timing and good pre-aiming hygiene. And yeah, it really is that simple, but it's a technique that while it's talked about, it's highly neglected by players that are looking to improve. Pre-aiming's not necessarily something you practice in tandem with your regular aim training, but it is something that can be improved upon if you know how to go about it. This goes hand in hand with proper crosshair placement, which we don't really dive into as we have plenty of other videos covering that topic. Improving pre-aiming is a pretty easy task. What it boils down to mainly is general awareness of your crosshair and understanding what you did wrong in an aim duel in which your crosshair was improperly trained before swinging. When you swing an angle, any angle, always attempt to pre-aim where you think an enemy might be. If you have no info, swing the common angles first before fully exposing yourself right out in the open. Do this consistently. Pre-aiming is one of those skills that just kind of develops over time. Now, the reason this is the first point of our video is to help everyone understand that while it is a simple concept, there must be a conscious effort to improve and pay attention to pre-aiming in order to improve improve at a faster rate. Good crosshair placement in tandem with solid pre-aiming and core mechanic fundamentals of aiming will make you an extremely solid aimer. It's just understanding that aiming is multiple main pillars, like flicking, tracking, crosshair placement, pre-aiming, followed by other categories of aiming that, once mastered, really help you round out your kit and make you more consistent at aiming. Learning to take gunfights effectively with your pre-aim and crosshair placement is by far the most important part of improving at Valorant. At the end of the day, even if you make all the correct decisions up until the gunfight, if you end up missing your shots, you will lose. If you're new to the game or just struggling with your aim recently, we've got just the thing to bring your aim up to a competitive level and start taking over your matches. We recently produced an interactive hour-long masterclass on aim, complete with everything you need to know about becoming an aim god in Valorant. Combine that with everything else on the site, as well as the one-on-one -on -one coaching we do for site subscribers over in Discord, we guarantee we'll get you climbing in no time. In fact, our guarantee is so strong, we'll give you your money back if we can't help you climb. This means there's literally no risk, which is something other services just can't offer you. Use the link in the description below for a discount, and we'll see you there. Moving on to our second tip. This brings us to micro flicking, which is a very important mechanic of aiming in Valorant. This is secondary to pre-aiming in a lot of instances, and you'll lose a lot of fair fights due to your micro flicking being off. Before we start on how to improve this skill, let's talk about why you should work on it and what exactly it is. The reason micro flicking is important is because it goes hand in hand with pre-aiming. When you swing an angle after pre-aiming but you're slightly off where you should be, what's your first thing you do instinctively? You adjust. You quickly adjust your aim to attempt to match your crosshair up with the opponent's head. The issue here is players with poor micro flicking tend to panic since they're making a rapid adjustment. And in turn, they usually over flick or under flick and both of these are equally bad and they usually make you panic even further and lose the gunfight. Professional players have turned micro flicking into one of their most basic fundamentals of 
play. Micro flicking should feel natural, and you should be comfortable making those quick adjustments to the head. With practice, you should be able to become fairly consistent with it over the course of a few training sessions. But how do I get good at micro flicks? So micro flick improvement is one of the simplest types of aim training that you can perform. And the muscle memory, once you learn it, it generally sticks to an extent. First off, you're gonna wanna load up the practice range. This is where a lot of the training from today will take place. Okay, once you're here in the practice range, you can start by loading up static bots to start your training. From here, you need to put your crosshair at head level, then offset it from a bot's head from varying degrees, but make it sure to keep it somewhat close. From this position, make a clear and concise correction to the head of the bot. Once you make the correction, shoot. Take this training very slow, and after each kill, take a mental note of how far off you were from the bot. Did you over flick? Did you under flick? Are you consistently doing one of these two? If so, understand which areas of micro flicking you're weak in. I've personally been playing FPS games for 12 years, and I understand that aiming to the right is particularly weaker than my left side, so I always take a bit of extra care in polishing that side of my aim competence. Do this for about 100 kills. It shouldn't take too long. If you want to tone it down, do it for around 50. This is something you should work into your daily routine, and once you get more used to flicking these targets in a small path, it should start to feel very natural. One of the biggest tips we can give you today on the topic of micro flicking is if you're consistently over or under flicking for at least two weeks of doing this routine, play around with your sensitivity. If you're consistently falling short of hitting the flick, raise your sensitivity slightly until you're able to flick a little more consistently. Over flicking and ending up miles away from your opponent's head lower your sensitivity. It's all very simple, but a lot of players tend to fail to see how important micro flicking truly is in making you more consistent and well-rounded. A little reminder to everyone watching, there are multiple fundamental factors that go into how good of an aimer you are. It's simple, but not as simple as monkey point click. You can't even make your own routine based off your own personal weak areas in aiming, which we recommend doing as opposed to following an already created aim routine. It allows you to tailor it specifically to your weak areas. Tracking. Where to begin? Tracking is a staple name in the aiming community, and tracking is actually important contrary to popular belief in the Valorant scene. People tend to think that tracking is only useful in games like Overwatch. Due to the fast-paced action and characters most noted for tracking, needing the mechanics so heavily, like Tracer. The issue is, tracking is actually pretty important, and we're gonna tell you why. Tracking's heavily utilized in lots of specific scenarios in Valorant. One of the easiest ways to think of tracking is, picture a jet mid-updraft throwing knives at at you while you panic and try to follow her with your crosshair only to watch your crosshair crudely follow and miss half the shots, resulting in you losing the gunfight. This is just one example of where tracking can be the key to winning a gunfight, and we see it all the time. Players excel at every aspect of aiming, but their tracking is pretty weak due to the fact that they don't train it. Learning how to efficiently track is like a glue that holds other forms of mechanical skill together. It's just as important as every other aiming mechanic that's spoken about. Not only can tracking help you win gunfights in Valorant more consistently, it can also help you feel more confident when taking gunfights. And when your aim is rarely to blame for losing a gunfight, it really helps you dial in on the reasons you died in certain scenarios. So we've established why tracking is so important. Now let's talk about why and how to train in the ease of training this skill. This skill is very teachable and very in tune with muscle memory. So once you learn how to do this, you'll have three of the most important aiming mechanics improving at a consistent rate, making you that much better and helping you push through those plateaus you might find yourself meeting down the road in your Valorant journey. In the practice range, once again, you're gonna wanna load up the static bots. Don't worry, we'll move on to moving bots in the second portion of the training. Loosen up your wrist and your hand and aim at the bot's head. From this position, you're gonna move left to right slowly, all while keeping your crosshair trained on the bot's head. Do this for roughly 15 to 20 seconds and then take a break. Once you break for a few seconds, move on to the next bot, rinse repeat for at most like 25 bots. And it's that simple. Once you get fairly proficient in this area, try moving on to moving bots. This will make it a bit more difficult to stay on target, but it's gonna help your progression. This portion of any routine should generally be done at the start of your aiming routine, as it loosens your wrist and your hand up and all around just warms up your aim. If you notice your crosshair stuttering a bit, try loosening your grip. Another thing to note, this can also help you determine if you need to raise or lower your sensitivity. If you're having trouble keeping up with the bot's head, try raising your sensitivity or lowering your sensitivity. Strafe burst, strafe burst, strafe tap, counter strafing. 
Moving on, counter strafing or AD tapping, it's an amazing tool. It enables those that are fairly proficient in gunplay and aim mechanics to really shine when they master it. Fortunately for us, Valorant players don't necessarily need to practice this skill. And the reason counter strafing is so important in games like Counter Strike, it's that tapping the opposing movement key that you're using almost instantly halts your momentum, instantly boosting your accuracy when you correct your movement. In Valorant, simply stopping is about the same speed as if you were to press the opposite movement key. For example, example, holding D and pressing A and then shooting. Even though this mechanic might not be all that important in Valorant, not moving while shooting, while it does sound a little basic, can be a little more in depth than people tend to notice. In Valorant, you move a lot, sometimes without realizing it. When you're dialed into a match, you do many things while you're immersed and focused into the gameplay that you're probably going to miss. Moving and shooting is a prime example of something people tend to overlook due to how simple it is. I notice it a lot in Immortal players that I watch and coach. There are countless times players will be moving, think that they stop, shoot, and their bullets are completely off. And yeah, sometimes it can happen due to RNG that Riot decided would be a great idea to implement, but more often than not, it boils down to players not understanding when exactly they're completely at a full stop. It's so insanely simple, but it's so overlooked. This is more of something to just be consciously thinking about after you die. Was I really not moving there? It's a good question to ask yourself after a lost gunfight. There are ways to learn when you're at a full stop, and we definitely recommend everybody, no matter their level, at least try this out so they can understand their own movement at a more intimate level. When you combine the three previous tips with recognition of your own movement speed, you're going to be swinging and tapping people in no time. In Valorant, a lot of reasons you're losing gunfights and a lot of reasons your aim might feel entirely off is because you're panicking mid-gunfight. This, this one right here. Hands down, one of the biggest flaws in Valorant players. They see players like Tens going absolutely ballistic, aiming and flicking to everything possible, and they want to replicate that. I can promise you, just slow down, take your time, just breathe, please. One important thing to remember whenever you're playing Valorant, fights are genuinely a lot longer than you perceive them to be. Some fights even last up to a few seconds. You have that time to be a little bit more precise before you take your shot. Take this for example. This player misses a few bursts, immediately panics, and drops into a spray, making his opponent calmly take his time and shoot him while he's crouched. Ugh, don't be like this guy. Take your time in gunfights. Don't take too long, but remember, you usually have a decent amount of time to adjust your aim and hit your shots. If you pair this with the other fundamentals, especially tracking, you're going to be on your way to mastering calm aiming, which is way more consistent than rapid aiming. I notice personally when I'm in a bad mental state during gameplay, this is the first thing to go out. It's my aiming confidence. Even when my aim isn't really at fault. Once I start to panic during a fight, even subconsciously, it's just downhill from there. So take it from us at Skillcapped. Be calm while aiming and apply the principles we're teaching and you will steadily improve. This is a big one. Practicing properly, not overtraining. It's actually a pretty important thing to do while playing Valorant. There are ways to improve at the game that are much, much faster than just playing. We'll go over it soon. But first, we have to address the importance of burnout and slump prevention. Let's talk about aim practice for a second. Aim practice is without a doubt extremely important if you want to play the game at a professional level. Without aim practice, you will never see your full potential as a player. Also, try to understand, you should focus on certain aspects of aim training. For instance, we previously talked about how players are lacking certain aspects of their aim prowess, such as amazing tracking but poor flicking, or good flicking but bad pre-aiming. Lacking in any one of these areas will make itself apparent if you neglect training a certain aspect, so make sure your routine is curated specifically for what you recognize yourself to be personally worse at. It'd be kind of silly to play deathmatch for five hours a day and expect to get way better at Valorant. Sure, you'll see some improvement, but we're here to teach you how to work smarter, not harder. Every single week you practice your aim, curate your routine specifically to focus on one area of your aim. Take for example, you're playing and you notice everything aim-wise feels great, but you can't help but notice your micro adjustments and flicks just aren't hitting at all. For the next week while you're aim training, you should really hone in on the practice you're putting into your flick shots. Take roughly 30 minutes to an hour to do a standard aim routine, but do more flick practice than you normally would in a standard routine. 
This is going to ensure you recognize your flaws and you hammer them out right when you notice them, ensuring aim that is quite to a large extent balanced in all aspects. We also understand that people just want to play the game, and that's entirely okay. If you don't really care to take your gameplay to the next level or to do all these specific aim training methods in order to really dial in your aim, consciously make an effort to improve upon other areas while you're playing. You'll be able to play the game still, but you'll be improving at a faster rate because you're focused on what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how you could be doing it better. If you aren't going to take the steps to aim train, but you want to get better, it's easily one of the best ways we can recommend you improve. Now, a great example of overtraining and neglecting certain areas would be take lifting, for example. You're going to notice 100% someone that only trains their upper body. You probably see memes about it all the time. Never skip leg day. It's a universal thing that everybody says. Never skip tracking day. <laughs> That's our favorite quote over at Skillcapped. Burnouts are real in everything in life, and Valorant is no exception. Too much of one thing can always be bad. Too much of aim practice can definitely be bad. There are even ways to injure your wrist from too much pressure placed on your grip and turning your wrist in certain ways for too long. So go easy on the aim training. Make sure you give yourself days where you avoid training and you're just able to reset and absorb the training you completed over the previous days. A burnout will set you back way more than days you take off aim training. And it doesn't mean don't train on your aim, but don't do it every single day for five hours a day. That's definitely overkill. Have a goal in mind and practice with purpose. All right, this is our final point. Once you've gotten all the other previous points hammered down, you should have no issues becoming an aim gremlin, haunting the Valorant ranked experience and anyone that dares touch Valorant ranked. But this doesn't mean you're the best player to touch the game. This brings us to overconfidence. Yeah, overconfidence can be good, but it can also be quite the hindrance to yourself and your team. Just because you're good at aiming now doesn't mean you can swing anyone and win any fight you take. Remember the foundational topics, how a lot of these work together and make one large aiming unit. Well, now you have to put that aiming unit together in tandem with your game sense. Think of yourself as a painter. The game sense is the paint, your aim is the paintbrush. Without the paint, all you have is a wooden stick. But given the proper colors and techniques to incorporate with your brush, you can paint a pretty cool picture for yourself. You need to use your aim wisely. Don't swing everything because you know you can out-aim everyone. Sure, it'll work sometimes. We're not going to deny that. Sometimes you're just having an insanely good game. But take a step back to all those times you got shut down for doing exactly that. Swinging while brimming with confidence. There are and there always will be people who are capable of shutting it down. So if you do decide to be extremely overconfident, just do it with your teammates' help. It is a team game after all. At this point, you should be on your way to rapidly improving in Valorant. Make sure you put all these tips together because it's going to make your aim and even your playstyle all that more rounded. Understand that a lot of these points don't work super well without the others, so make sure you find what you're doing poorly and start working on it as soon as you can. Practice to improve and with purpose and use these fundamentals you learned today to skyrocket you to radiance.